Hello and welcome to a video where Miro makes not such great decisions. Pretty much every video, isn't it? First of all, we have new microphones today. Uh, this is something that Betsy sent me so I can kind of be more further away from the camera. She said, Miro, you must absolutely get away from the camera. No, she did not say that, but all jokes aside, it's useful for when you record something and you're kind of far away and then you don't hear the entire room. But usually people, you know, when, when you get a new lens, when you change the angle of recording or when you change the mics, you are supposed to do a test shot. I did not do that, so I absolutely have no idea if the voice is even recording, how am I sounding? No one knows. Nero certainly doesn't know, so you're gonna get this footage, whatever happens, whatever sounds may come. <laughs> You're getting it, and you're loving it. Uh, I should probably have some coffee, shouldn't I? Oh, too hot, too hot, too hot. No, not, not the time yet. Second thing... I don't remember. There were a couple of things that I wanted to mention, but I, I just cannot remember what the second thing is. I guess we're just gonna start with what we have today. I have some new Hoyas. They arrived to me almost a week ago, I would say, and they don't look good. Yeah, they're from a nursery I said I wasn't gonna order from again. And I did, and it's bad. <laughs> oh well. I have some Hoyas from this nursery. If you watched my videos last year, I think I got some root millibugs from those Hoyas because I put them in pond to kind of reroot them, adjust them to pond. I didn't cut off the roots, but the roots were in very, very bad shape. I didn't cut off the roots, I just kind of removed the moss because they shipped the plants in sphagnum moss. I put them in pond and then when I was repotting, I just dumped that pond with the rest of the pond that I was using and I'm pretty sure that's how I got some root millibugs on my Hoyas. To this day, those Hoyas are some of my worst performing Hoyas. Some of them are growing okay, but a lot of them are just not great. So you wonder why I ordered from them again. I don't know. I have no control. I just... No one knows, okay? I, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. This is the phase of shame. But I think it's probably because the price was good and the size of the plants was good. And I kind of ordered them saying, you know, I'm just gonna reroot them and that's that. And it is what I'm going to do. But still, I was kind of hoping for a little bit better quality. This is Hoya Pacharawalai. A 023. This is called a Hoya Incensis. I think this is some sort of a subquintuple nervous cross based on the leaf. And this one actually looks okay. This is the one that looks okay. So you can kind of see it has nice leaves. And I absolutely love subquintuple nervous. So I decided to order this one. And as you can see, it is in sphagnum moss here. And I am actually not even going to try to remove the moss. The moss is super wet. All of the plants in that shipment arrived very wet, which is not great when you're shipping Hoyas. I think we're just going to have to reroot all of them because I kind of learned my lesson last time, if you know what I mean. And plus, it's gonna be very difficult to remove all the moss. I don't think this is worth it. You can absolutely remove the moss, and this is actually the good level of moisture. It's not too wet, it's not too dry, but it's gonna take forever. You need a lot of patience. And then I, you know, I plan to grow this in pond, which means most likely these roots are not gonna make it. It's just gonna be too much. So, the easiest thing. Cut. The second one is Hoya Noel. I'm gonna show you Hoya Noel. So we have a couple of things going on here. First of all, the top, as you can see, very, very wrinkly. See that? That's not a great sign, right? We can all see that, hopefully. As we get closer to the bottom, the situation improves. So this is the bottom of the plant. That's much better. The potting mix, the moss, is wet. This probably tells us that the roots aren't doing the best. When this arrived, these leaves were firmer, so my initial plan was to take a couple of cuttings, maybe here, here, to kind of get three plants, just in case, or to get two, so maybe a cutting here. Now I don't really know because these leaves are not looking great. They are very, very dehydrated, and I just don't know why, because the leaves towards the bottom are firmer. I think I'm just gonna leave it as is, and then we'll see what will happen with these leaves. They are a bit yellowish, too. 
I think you can kind of see that compared to the bottom. Like these are definitely darker green. But it's a beautiful Hoya. It has some nice splashing on it. The last one is not okay. The last one is Hoya Erythrostema UT048. And first of all, I'm going to tell you this leaf was green several days ago. <laughs> not a great sign. So we're just going to take that off. We can see this leaf is also not doing well. I don't know if you can spot the, the leaf petiole there, how wrinkly even the leaf petiole is. So that's not a great sign. This is the plant. It was a quite a large plant. It wasn't very expensive. It was like 15 euros, I think. But this plant is not good. She's unwell. She really is unwell. You can see that the leaves are very, very wrinkly. Look at that. Just, there is no leaf on this plant that is firm. She is moist. Like, she's moist. Will this work? I just think we need to uncover as much of the stem as we can from this plant and take a couple of cuttings. So let's just start with the Operation Hoya. I think I'm gonna start first with this Hoya erythrostema. It is my first erythrostema. So I'm gonna just pull the moss down to uncover as much of the stem as possible because I don't want to get any of these roots. Maybe root mealybugs can happen. So I'm just gonna cut here. And a good thing is that I do see sap. This is a large cutting, right? It's gonna be too much. I don't think this is gonna make it, so I'm just gonna cut it here. I am gonna try to save this, but no one is happy about it. Now, let's just look at how we can divide these. We can do two cuttings. So this is one, the base of the plant. And then this is the second one. It's not ideal, this one, I would say. I would like this not to be a thing, but it is. The next one is gonna be real easy. I think we could probably take moss from this one, but root mealybugs, let's not risk it. Interestingly, there's no sap coming from this one. That's not a good sign, is it? Oh, okay. It was just late. She's a late sapper. <laughs> so this is the incensus. My focus is really not showing up for work today. In the last one, this is the Noel. Again, this one we can just cut here. I'm gonna let these dry a little bit before I put them in pawn. This is gonna be a bit tricky because as you can see, the stem is very short, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. And this one, I might just put in a bag. I don't know. I think Noel can stay like this for now, and then if this part, if the top part hydrates, I'm gonna take another cutting. I'm excited to see these grow, and I'm even more excited that I get to pot them, and this time I have learned my lesson, I will put them in my Radsta cabinet behind this Dean McDowell, which is absolutely huge. I don't even know if you can see. Oh boy! Oh, absolutely heavy. So, he's big. He has gotten big again, and I don't really know what to do. The pot is not so big, but the roots are out of the pot in the reservoir. He is just so nice. He does have a little damage from the heating pipes. Oopsie. But not my fault. Anyways, I'm gonna put the Hoyas down here. There is some space. Well, actually, there is space here even behind me. Okay, I have space for them. That's good. They're gonna go in a propagation box. They're gonna be isolated for, let's say, three, four weeks at least until they root, until they're really, really well rooted. And then I'm gonna try to move them away from everything else, maybe on the bottom of the tent or something like that, so they can kind of stay away. There is a lot of space in my big tent on the floor. It's time to get some breakfast, finish my coffee, and then pot the hoyas. And then we have Labor Day. That is good temperature of coffee, yes. We, we, we like that. Now's the time to drink it. Absolutely have no idea what's going on here anymore. We need um, something here. I have said before that I'm gonna order an Ikea desk. I have not done it, or Ikea, um, it's, a, it's a garden table. 
I think I'm just gonna steal this from Dean McDowell temporarily. Well, the issue with that is I don't know where to put my Dean McDowell. Okay. If it falls on my head and I die, you are not going to see this video. And if you are seeing this video, that means I am okay. Well, as okay as one is, we still don't see anything. I think we need to change the angle a little bit. So wait, wait a minute. This is not the best angle, but it may be the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have developed a headache since I recorded. It's a fancy way to say I'm in pain. I'm actually gonna lift you up a little bit more. Let's see how that is. That is a decent-ish angle. The top of my head is cut off, but nothing's happening there. It's just like a, a bun, so no one cares. <laughs> we need to pot these cuttings. I have pawn here next to me, and it is the last of pawn we have. Do you remember how I told you I'm gonna order more pawn? I still haven't done it. A lot of things that Miro says he will do and he doesn't. Um, so let's just start with the easy ones, because we feel brave. I'm glad that some of that pawn got into the pot. Quickly, one is done. I just really don't wanna do this. This is, I mean, I, I think I could just fill the pot. Basically, I think I can do this. Fill the pot, dig a little hole with my finger, put it in there, yeah and just not touch it much. This is gonna be an issue, I think, because this one will probably want to fall out. I cannot put any stake in here because then it's not gonna fit into the prop box. I'm actually going to use the same technique. The technique is fill the pot and then put the cutting and gently push and squeeze the pot. And there you go. <laughs> How to plant plants, Miro way. And then the second part of this erythrostema. I don't think Miro way is gonna work for this. Oh no, it works. There you go. A new way to pot your cuttings. You saw it here first. I'm gonna put these in a prop box in my Radsta cabinet. And I think maybe sometime in June, we can get an update on these ones. If they root faster, I'm gonna let you know. I'm just gonna water these, essentially shower them to get the dirt uh, from the pond out. I do that in the, in the place where people also shower. <laughs> oh. My brain is just not here today. Bathroom. I do that in the bathroom. It took me a minute to remember. And then I'm going to put them in the prop box, potentially spray the prop box with that sprayer that you can see in the back and put it in the Rodsta cabinet. I also have a couple of more Hoyas coming. Actually, I should get two more packages, but one is stuck in the post office. I think that one's gonna stay stuck. So I'm not actually thinking about that one, but I have another Hoya package with a um, couple of good Hoyas coming and I hope they're gonna look great. So, we're looking forward to that. I'm gonna show those to you. And then I think I'm not gonna order any more Hoyas for a while. Probably by the time I edit and upload this video, I will order even more Hoyas. I mean, one does not need to be a fortune teller to know that Miro is gonna order Hoyas. So I just wanted to show you something very, very exciting in my Mars Hydro Crow tent in the big one. And that is my Hoya Undulata, and she is in bloom. We also have some other Hoyas in bloom here. All the Sculatises are gonna be in bloom soon, and then this beautiful Hoya Rebecca is blooming, which, let's see, there you go, you can kind of see, and she has a lot, a lot of peduncles and buds here going for her. Also, that plant is growing. My Medinilla Foley is looking better and better, but that's not what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you is the beautiful flowers on Hoya Undulata. I mean, just look at those. Look at those, they're beautiful. The leaves are beautiful. This plant is loving the grow tent. And this is the first time the mother plant blooms. A cutting from this plant did bloom for me, but this is the first time on the mother plant that she blooms. Also a bit of an update from a previous video, my Hoya Spartioides does feel better. She is, doesn't look so dehydrated anymore, so things are improving for her. So that is really the quick update that I wanted to do with this grow tent. 
I also have this one next to it. Here, things need to be watered. So that is the update. Things need to be watered and they haven't been watered and we need to do a bit of a clean. So we're not gonna look into that mess. So we're just gonna focus on beautiful things right now, which are in this absolutely enormous grow tent. Sorry for checking on my phone, that's a bit rude, but I have an issue with my plant order. And I'm actually going to take some photos of the plant that I received because first of all, it did not arrive in great condition. So that's a problem number one. Problem number two, it's not what I ordered. I ordered a verticillata. I wanted to order, actually I wanted to order this plant. So that's not exactly the issue. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is, it kind of is. It said that it was out of stock, but clearly I received it and I actually preferred the other one. So I was glad that that one was still in stock. So this is between two clones of Verticillata. One is from Tangamus and one is from Lampung. And I actually wanted to order a Lampung and I will insert the photo here if I do find it, and I think I will, of how the plant was presented on the website. And clearly that is not what I received. Now, sometimes we can't really tell between different clones of Hoya, but between these two, there is a clear distinction. And I actually just asked a friend who ordered from them as well to send me photos and he did. And uh, he ordered both of those and there is a difference. My problem now is if I order again from this nursery and if I order the plant that I want, Will I get it? Will I get Verticillata from Lampung or will I get sent again this one? Problem number two, um, this plant is in a really bad condition and I don't think she's gonna make it. So that's a second problem here. Now let me just show you the plant first. This is what it looks like. As we can see, three leaf cutting and two leaves are going. They're leaving us. Let me just focus here. So you can see this leaf is basically gone. And the second leaf is about to go to, you can see it's starting to yellow. Why you ask me, I'm glad you asked. It's soaking wet. This is soaking, soaking wet. I don't know if you can see from the, I mean, that's kind of tough to see from the, from the footage, but this is all black and well, if I were to squeeze it, I would squeeze out some water. Also, this is spent seven days in shipping and two days until it got to me because plants cannot arrive uh, in most cases directly to me. So nine days after this was sent and this is still soaking wet. Not a good look. I will have to take photos of it before I repot it and I will absolutely repot it. I am 100% sure that I will not get any sort of a refund and I will not get the plant that I want. Maybe I will, I don't know. It would be nice to get the original one. I actually want both clones. I want this one too, but I would like a plant that has not been overwatered and that has, is not dying at the moment. I mean, we do still have hope with this one leaf, but I'm gonna tell you, it ain't looking good. The second plant that I ordered was Hoya Waimanie from Kapwas. This is a beautiful clone of Hoya Waimanie. This is why I wanted it. It already has new growth, so that's great. That actually makes me quite happy there. And beautiful, beautiful splashy leaves. You can see there, they are gorgeous. Again, one of them is yellow. Someone is not having great time with, with shipping. Oh, I have an email. Who's writing me? Me? Out of all people. It is an email from Hungarian Pod 101 that I should study. Fine. Fogok tanulni, nincs idomost. Here is istenem. See, basically no need to study at all. So yeah, this plant is unwell. I'm gonna reply to my friend and probably change the angle somehow, maybe in, in a more appealing way <laughs> where you don't see so much of me. And then we're gonna repot these plants. I don't know how well you can see this. Clearly this is not the best angle. We are just waiting for the new Ikea desk that we have not ordered. So I don't know what we're waiting for. The soaking wet verticillata, which does have some root rot here. It's surprising she doesn't have major root rot. And let's just, by the way, the test. I'm squeezing the soil, the potting mix. Look at all the water from that small part. I'm just gonna show you. That's from just one small part. Let's continue. Okay, let's take another part. Let's try to demonstrate this. Okay. 
Can you hear that? That is after 10 days. So far, no rot. That's all the potting mix. Let me tell you something, your potting mix is not supposed to make that sound. And I am gonna actually go in a short rant after this. I'm just trying to be as gentle in removing this as possible. Now, when you have plant like this, I actually took it out of the pot and it was on air, right? Just room temperature. I was trying to dry it out. That wasn't happening. Do you know why? Because it's super wet. This nursery says not repot for 30 days. Do you know what would happen to this plant? This plant would 100% die. Even now I'd say the chances of death are 80%. 80% are chances of death because this is way too wet. I, however, do not see stem rot, but this leaf is just definitely gonna leave us. So if we can just make it grow real fast, I think that's what can save us, to make this plant grow. Uh, well, you know what? I think I spoke too soon. I think I detect some stem rot here. Yep. That is stem rot. 100% stem rot. So that's not great. And actually this is where the roots have rotted towards the top. So not the bottom, but the top. And that is where actually the stem rot is. This stem here is rotten. And this is why I hate when nurseries tell me not to repot. Well, let me tell you, do not send wet plants and then maybe we would not have to repot. I'm gonna go into a full rant. I'm gonna go into a full rant as soon as I get done with this. I'm not gonna cut the plant because the stem rot is all the way up here. I don't think this is gonna make it. Had it been down here and if I could cut away some of this, then it would be fine, but I'm gonna let it dry out. Yeah, you can see this is peeling away. Look, typical sign of stem rot. This is the issue with one node cuttings, which is fine. Like I sell one node cuttings too, but I don't do this. I don't send rotten cuttings, first of all. I always check before sending. I never send rotten cuttings. I take them out of the potting mix if I had potted them and rooted them to check if they have accidentally rotten this one has, and these people have no idea. This is probably some import. I'm not gonna cut it. I would have to cut it here. And what if that is not okay? Then nothing, then we have cut away all the roots and maybe, somehow maybe this plant can survive still. I don't think so because the outer layer has been affected. The thing is, if it doesn't get to the inner layer, I think we can still make it work. The second one, it's fine. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm going to pot it and I'm not gonna show me potting it because right now I would like to have a rant with you. All right, so you saw what just happened. I didn't even wash my hands. I'm just gonna go full into a rant here. I don't like when nurseries and plant stores do this. And I understand, I'm gonna break it down, have patience. I don't like when they put a disclaimer, do not repot the plant for 10, 20, 30 days, otherwise you are going to void your warranty. I understand that some people order plants and they may not have a lot of experience and they may repot a plant that does not need to be repotted. I understand that. And this is why this clause exists, right? Um, we, when we sell plants, and I sell plants too, sometimes you will sell to someone and they may do something that should not have been done. They may repot to a potting mix that is way too heavy, kill the plant within several days, and then they will complain to you that they have killed the plant. And then you don't know, what, like, what can I do? You did something that you were not supposed to do. You bought a plant in eight centimeter pot, you put it in 20 centimeter pot in a heavy mix, of course it died, of course it got root rot within days and it's gone. I understand that. 
However, what are we supposed to do as people who do have knowledge? And listen, I will consider myself knowledgeable in plants because I have been growing exclusively Hoyas for at least five years. And then um, I have been growing plants for probably 20. I kind of know what I'm doing. When I was in sixth grade, I already knew about plants. I already knew about all these trends that you see now, you know, the possibility of root trimming. I knew about all of that because I read the books then. I may not have had friends, <laughs> but I knew about plants then. So to see someone who has a plant shop, plant store, and they opened that plant store in the last five or six years, and then they kind of condescendingly give you advice of what to do and what not to do. No, excuse me, I will not stand for that. This plant absolutely needs to be repotted. It needed to be repotted probably six, seven, eight days ago because it is completely wet. No, you know what? This plant should not have been sent this wet. Orchid nurseries will not send you plants until the plants have been dry. They will not send you plants. Some orchid nurseries, yes, they will make mistakes, but the best ones, the best orchid nurseries, the most reputable orchid nurseries will not send you wet orchids. On some websites you will see, there will be like a section that says, when you place an order, it may take up to two weeks before we send it because we need to wait for the plants to dry out. Summer is a different thing heat and all of that, it's a different thing. But sending wet plants in mail will not only lead to root rot, but also to whole thing of like fungal and bacterial infections. I, I still remember my Jose Bono that I ordered from Germany from a private seller. It fell apart in the post because this plant was sent wet. This plant was sent with wet leaves, with wet potting mix. This plant, as you can see, has developed black spots. Excuse me, how did it develop black spots? This is a very specific of plant being overwatered. This is most likely fungal, the black spotting that now my camera won't focus on. And of course, not every Hoya leaf will be perfect. And I would understand if it was a broken leaf or something. I wouldn't even mind if it was yellow leaf for whatever reason, but this plant is clearly rotten. Maybe this plant can make it, but I should not have to go through this. You should make sure that you are sending the plants dry or barely, barely moist. It's fine if you send the plants barely, barely moist, but do not send them wet. You heard the noise that this potting mix was making, okay? You heard the noise. This was not just a little bit wet. No, this was soaking wet. I still don't know what will happen if these people will replace my plant because I also repotted it, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to wait for 30 days because you know, if I wait for 30 days, some magical thing will happen and this plant will, what? Completely rot and then you will tell me, well, it has been with you for 30 days. What do you, you know, it just, I, again, I understand why this exists. I understand, but also this is not the way to do it. And this is actually why I like to buy Hoya cuttings because this is how Hoyas will arrive to you. A lot of sellers, a lot of stores actually will not propagate their own Hoyas unless they are like a Hoya specific store, right? Then yes, or if they are collectors who have been propagating Hoyas, specifically Hoyas for sale, those plants are never going to arrive to you wet. What I see as an issue is people who import from, from Thailand, from um, Indonesia, wherever, and they just sell them right away for a cheap price, relatively cheap price, way, way, way lower than dedicated Hoya stores. And that's because, well, they didn't propagate it. They didn't grow it out. They just received it, watered it, sometimes not even that, packed it and it's on its way. Or they found it in a nursery, bought it, packed it, and it's on its way. No one cares. I cannot believe that someone can be selling plants for, you know, if you have started when the pandemic hit, that's like three years, and still not learn the basic thing, do not send plants wet. If there is an issue, if the plant is wet, don't send it. Send me an email and say, sorry, we cannot send your order right now. Maybe in two weeks, we need to wait for the plant to dry out. Also, who is watering these plants? Why is it so wet? Never in your life you should have Hoya this wet in this potting mix. I can still hear the moisture. Like, what the, What are you doing? What are people doing? The thing is, I want to order from the, this nursery again because they have a Hoya that I want. This is not the Hoya that I wanted. 
but I also wanted this one. It was out of stock. I don't want it now. It looks like absolute piece of garbage. There is a hope it will make it, but also like this will have to be rerouted. If you see this plant in the future, it may just be small again. I mean, even if this grows, which again, I doubt it will have, I'll have to take a cutting and reroute it pretty much as soon as I can this, because this is just not going to work. Th th these roots, this stem, it's not going to work for it. That is just the end. I'm sorry that I cannot end this video on a more positive note. I really wish I could. Just please, everyone who is selling Hoyas, make sure that you send the plant dry, unless it's a thin-leaved Hoya, Hoya Loki, Multiflora, Lasianta, Praetori, whatever is thin-leaved. I'm sure you can be the judge of that. Do not send other Hoyas. Do not send Verticillata, Carnosa, any other Hoya that has any succulency to it. Do not send it wet. I would really wish this was just a cutting, and this is again to kind of go back to it, why I prefer to buy Hoya cuttings unrooted. Because I cannot do anything right now. If I received an unrooted cutting and maybe it started to rot a bit at the bottom, if sometimes if people uh, wrap in something that's too wet, I can just cut that off and it's fine. Here, I cannot do anything. I cannot cut here because what, what there's no, it's gonna be very close to the node. That's not gonna be a great situation. I'm just gonna leave it as is. It may live, it may not live at this point. I really don't care. My whole experience of, of wanting this plant, my whole experience of this plant is ruined. I mean, sure, mistakes happen. Maybe I'm just, I'm just really angry, I think. The reason I think why I'm angry is because I'm already anticipating the response not to be positive because I have dealt with many shops and I know what kind of response they will have. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe I should anticipate a positive response. I don't know if you do this. Like sometimes I will have arguments that have not happened and I will get worked up just the same. I'm trying actually not to do that. I'm trying really hard not to do that, but right now it's happening. I'm already having a back and forth discussion with this person that I don't know and <laughs> because of the email that I didn't receive, right? It takes very little to educate yourself in Hoya Everyone has educated themselves in aeroids. We get it. You love aeroids. Plant community loves aeroids. I just wish that other plants can get a little bit of the spotlight they deserve, not just aeroids. And like, if Hoya's got a bit of spotlight, you would know this is not what you're supposed to do with the Hoya. This is not how you're supposed to send a Hoya. Can we just give a spotlight to other plants? If you're already gonna sell everything else, make sure to educate yourself because, spoiler, if you know about aeroids, that doesn't mean you know about other plants. Shocking, I know. And also, um, out of plants to grow, aeroids are probably some of the easiest plants to grow. Okay, I think this is the end of the rant. I'm just, I could go on, I could go on. I'm worked up, I'm working myself up, I shouldn't. Not gonna think about this anymore and end the video on a positive note. And that positive note is, it is sunny, it is time for dinner, dinner is good. Dinner, food is nice, positive. We're trying to be positive here. Thank you for watching. I will keep you updated on these two plants. By the way, some of the plants that I have received not in a great condition are doing really well. I'm just gonna quickly show you one of them. I don't know if you remember my Hoya Joy. Let me just kind of hide the spoiler, but she did not arrive in great condition. She had those two leaves. And then look at her, look at that comeback. She is looking gorgeous. She's giving splash. She is giving waxy leaf. She's giving bigger leaf. She's giving so much and I love her. Beautiful, beautiful Hoya. And I'm so happy I have it. I'm so happy she's doing real great. You need to make her recovery too, okay? Recovery. And there you go. That's your positive note for the end of the video. Have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Let's try to keep it positive. But if you also want to rant, I'm here for it. So, and see you around in the channel, which is most likely next week. When I say most likely, it is 100% because Mirror has a deadline. So, sorry.
You're not getting away from me. Bye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Becky Higgins, Beth Gibson, Betsy Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Feyre, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Oppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Houseman Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Liplan the Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Harmar, B, Martina Alif Perde, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Mirpa Grun Roos, Snaily Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropical, Sneeta Macy PJ, Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Dude, Tia B, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Youth of the Wallamut, Zordorama, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brian Phillips, Kill. Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantolania, Ringlob, and Tang Watana Sriakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Kari, Constance, Amelia Bronson, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chin Muller. Thank you all so much for your incredible support, I hope that you enjoyed this video, have a lovely weekend, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye!